All right, class, welcome to Math 2020. Um, we are going to start Chapter 2, which is our fundamental geometric ideas, and it's going to start our section on deductive thinking. Okay. Deductive thinking is an important concept in geometry. A uh, famous geometer from Greece, his name was Euclid, and he did lots of deductive thinking in 13 volumes of geometric works. And because his work was so remarkable, uh, we've taken on his Western, like European, like Western geometric thoughts, and that's the geometry we use today. So his book stood for over a thousand, two thousand years um, as the standard for geometric thinking and deductive thinking. So deductive thinking is where you take one idea, a basic principle, and you can deduce another different and new basic principle from it. Okay. So that's a new type of thing that we want you to learn here in the 2020. And we're going to do that through chapter 2 and 3 and 4. So we're going to spend a lot of time on deductive thinking. We're going to incorporate new geometric uh, ideas. We're going to learn about triangles and quadrilaterals in, uh, along the way. And so it's a great setup. So that's why we like this book set in this course. Uh, deductive thinking is in contrast to inductive thinking, and inductive thinking is something that we've done in Math 2010 and 2015, where you take a bunch of examples and you generalize an idea from those examples. We'll also still do that in 2020 as well, um, kind of even with this first uh, handout from section 2.1, okay? but we'll get to deductive thinking here in a little bit. We're going to use inductive thinking to generate those basic properties. So in this handout, this is the first page, and you can follow along with your printout. Um, and we're going to um, start generating some basic properties. And we're going to do it step by step, and I'll show you how this is to be done. The tools that you'll need for this section are your protractor, your ruler, and compass. Because we're going to throw in some things about circles. All right, so in the space below, we're going to draw a point and label it P. Just draw a big point in the middle, label it P. Okay. And we're going to draw three or four rays coming out of P in any direction, and we're going to label those A, B, and C. Okay. So let's just do three rays, well, maybe four for fun, out of any direction here. So we did four rays, and we're going to label their end, like this point right here, A, B, C, and D. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to measure the angles around P in degrees using our protractors. Okay. So I'm going to start with point A, measure the angles. Now this is going to be the measure of angle a, P, B. I'm going to start with that one. I measure it with my protractor. So I place my protractor on A. That's going to be my zero line there. And B, and P is the center point right here. And notice that B is right along the 60 degree mark. So I'm using my inside scale. So 0 to 60. Okay, so that's going to equal 60 degrees. Now the measure, I'm measuring all my angles, so I'm going to write this down, 60 degrees. It's going to have it to get into once you measure, once you find the degree of something. Now I'm going to find the measure of angle A, B, P, C. Okay. That's this one here that I marked. Okay, B, P, C, so I put my protractor on there, and that's like 90 degrees, right on 90 degrees. Then I'm going to find the measure of the next angle, which is right here, and that's going to be measure C, angle C, P, D. Okay. C, P, D. Sounds like the Chicago Police Department or something. So we're going to go ahead and put that angle there on zero, and then we're going to count up on this bottom scale, and it goes up to 130 degrees. Okay. 130 degrees. 
The last angle is right here. Oh, oops, this one was 90 degrees and 130 degrees. And is that's going to be the we're gonna find the measure of angle D P A. Okay, D P A. And put my zero mark on on A, let's say. And D is coming right out from A, right along the 100 degree mark. Okay. Now I'm going to add these together. Okay, so that's this step here. Sum the measures. And that's all zero here. 60 and 90. 6 and 9 makes 15. 15 and 3 makes 8. It's 15, 15, 3 is 8. And 18, and at 380 degrees. Okay. Now, there's going to be a little bit of measurement error. And what it should be is actually, it should be 360 degrees, right? Because we set all the angles around a circle. There's my circle here. We'll add up to 360 degrees. Alright, so let me check these and see real quick how they're doing. Okay, that one was 60, pretty right on. This one was 90, pretty right on. This one I'm going to measure it from this side. And it goes up to, well, not quite 130. On this part, I'd say 125. So this one should be 125. Let's see if we can get it more exact. And this one I'll measure from here and get, oh, okay. This one I'm getting again as 80. Okay, so this is actually 80 right here. Okay. So what we do have, so I'm going to go ahead and erase that. And this one's going to be 80. So, so it should be maybe about 130. Let's round that up to 130. Okay. So we have 0, 0, 0, 0. 6 and 9 is 15. 15 and 3 is 18. And 18, 18 is 26. Okay. And that gives me my 360. Okay. So if I measured a little bit more accurately, then I would be able to get the right answer. All right, so this illustrates this a property. Okay, the property that we have is that if you did this with yours, you did you probably drew random rays out that are different than mine. So make them different than mine, and you can see that they will always add up to 360 because all the angles around a point, which is like around a circle, the middle of a circle, will add up to 360. So that's our property. Okay. So we are going to fill in the line, the lines down here for our property. The sum of the measures of the angles at a point is 360 degrees. And that's my property. Now, when we're going to do deductive thinking, we're going to use our properties. Okay, as we go from one property to another, we we'll use them. And this is what we this is what we have to do. Uh, we're going to use uh, all the angles and we're going to add them up together. There could be many more around a point. So I'm going to say like, well, angle. Um, we're going to. Oh yeah, and we're going to. You can abbreviate. Because here I would use the three letters, but you can abbreviate. So let's say this was my first one. This is angle A. This could be angle B. This could be angle C. This could be angle D. Okay. So A plus B plus C plus however many there are around that point must be equal to 360 degrees. If you're going to use this property, okay, you have to write it as a sum. Okay. I'm going to emphasize that because many students will will say, let's say we don't know what D is, okay, and we're going to just subtract it off of 360, but the following the tradition of Euclid and what he set forth 
is that we write it as a sum and use more algebra to find our missing angle. Okay, so I'm going to emphasize this to write as a sum. Okay, and if you don't know one of these, you keep the letter in there and put the numbers for everything else. Now the abbreviation is that like we got since we're doing this geometric move with um, finding one of these missing angles, for example, I need to show or say why that is true. And that is also a tradition from Euclid. He gave a reason for every geometric move he did. In this course, we'll do a reason for every geometric move. If there's some sort of or algebra move or arithmetic move, we don't need a reason for it. But we're going to do some with our um, geometric moves. Okay. So finding a missing angle in a picture from geometry, geometric picture is going to be a geometric move. And so we have to say an abbreviation. Okay. And the abbreviation is going to be angles at a point. PT abbreviate point. That's what this whole property is in a few words. A few words. Okay. So that's our first property that we've discovered. Okay, our next property that we're going to do is found in number two on the next page. What we want to do is we want to draw a straight line and we're going to label it, label point on it P. So our straight line, we're going to put, use our ruler to help us. And a point on it will label P. This is going to be a straight angle, and I have my vertex at P there. Draw two or three rays coming out of P in any direction. Okay, we'll do like one right here, one right here. Okay. We'll draw two rays, and we're going to label those A and B. So I'm actually going to label them right here. This one's going to be point A, point B, point C, and point D. Well, I want to measure the angles around P in degrees. Okay, so I'm going to measure three angles. So those are angle A, angle, so that's going to equal some amount of degrees. Angle B is going to equal some amount, and angle C is going to equal some amount. Okay, so the measure of angle A is going to equal to, well, we get our protractor for that. Okay, set it on our zero line, vertex at P, and I got that, that angle A is going to be 70 degrees. Okay, the measure of angle B is equal to, let's go ahead and go to B, put the zero line on here. B is going to be uh, 75 degrees. Okay, and then measure of angle C is equal to, put our zero line here, and C is coming out at 35 degrees. Okay, we measured the angles in degrees here. Now we're going to sum of the measures of all the angles. So that's 0, 1, 1 and 7 is 8, 8 and 7 is 15, and that makes 180. So 7 is 8, 7 is 15, plus another 3 is 18. So 180 degrees. Notice that I'm putting a zero degree sign here, and you must put units on all of your numbers in this course, so make sure you always put the degrees on. And, okay, so what property did we discover? That's 70 degrees there, that's uh, 75 degrees, and that one's 35 degrees. Okay, we actually got our good answer this time. And that the angles that add here, we've discovered that the angles, and hopefully you have two, that the angles, all those together on a straight line, um, add, to eight, add to 180 degrees, on a straight angle there. Okay, so we're going to write it in our property. The sum. Of the measures of of the measures of angles on a line okay because that's my line right here a d um, the sum of the measures is one hundred and eighty degrees okay as you would expect so it's half of the circle there. So we've got kind of half a circle here, semicircle, and all those angle measures will sum to 180. Now the use is, remember that we're going to use them as sums again. So I have three angles in my example, but there could be more angles. So however many you add up together, you sum them to 180 degrees. Whenever you use this property, write as a sum.
right, all the angles together. And we're going to do that at the end of this, do some example homework problems. Okay. The abbreviation is angles on a line. Okay, this one you'll use a lot. Okay, use a lot. Okay, so going on to number three. In the space below, we're going to draw a right angle. Okay. So we're just going to draw one at a corner here. Draw a corner. And it's not going to be perfect, perfect. But it should do here. Mark it with a box so it's right. Now my vertex is P again. And this is going to be A and this is going to be B. Okay, so you want to draw a ray coming out at any direction. So I'm going to draw one right here. And let us see. We're going to measure the angles. So here's angle A and here's angle B. Okay. Now we're going to do the same thing as before, and I'll give you guys a chance to guess, a give a big guess at what we're going to do here. Now angle C I drew at random, and it's coming out at 50 degrees. Right here, B is 50 degrees, and this one, and then this one right here is going to be coming out at see that right here, and at 40 degrees. Okay. So the measure of angle A is equal to 40 degrees. The measure of angle B is equal to 50 degrees. Okay. So that works out because I'm going to sum them together. And I'm going to get 90 degrees. Okay, big surprise, right? But it'll always work out. So if I draw a right angle and I split up into however many um, parts we want, it will always add to 90 degrees. So the property that we have is the sum of the measure of the angles in a right angle is 90 degrees. So the sum of the measures. of the angles in a right angle is 90 degrees. Now my use is however many um, angles I'm going to have, A plus B plus C, however many there are, I'm going to set that equal to 90 degrees. Okay, if you ever use this property, the, the angles in a right angle, you want to write a sum. So write all the angles as a sum and use algebra to solve it. You're not going to just subtract off of from 190 degrees. Just like up here, I don't want you to subtract off of 180. We're going to be tradition of the Greeks. They wrote it as, as a sum there. So the abbreviation for this one is angles in a right angle. So angle symbol with an S in a RT for right and angle. Okay, so that's the abbreviation for it. All right, so that's our first whole page. Let's go on to our second page here. Okay. We're going to do another property, but we're, this is our first exercise in deductive thinking. Okay, because we're going to use the three properties that we know already angles at a point angles on a line and angles in a right angle to choose from to deduce this next property. Okay. All right, so here's the directions here. We're going to draw two intersecting lines with our uh, ruler. Okay, so I'll draw one here. That's a line right there. And just to put the other one at any angle, okay, do a different angle than this one. And there's the other one. Now the in intersection we're going to do it label as point P. Okay, so there's my point P. And the other parts we're going to label as A, B, C, and D. Okay. So those are the other points, and I formed some angles here. We're going to measure angle APB and record it in the table below. There's APB right here. So this is the measure I'm going to angle I'm going to measure. Okay. And I'm going to use my protractor. This one. Okay, putting it on that, it's my zero here. And you just could have you could have an acute angle here. Here I have an obtuse one, but you can have a small angle if you want. 
all the way to 150 degrees. So right here, 150 degrees all the way around. Okay, so this is going to be um, angle A, P, B. That's equal to 150 degrees. And I'm going to write it down here in my little guiding diagram. Now in number two, we're going to record that below and we're going to use a property to find out how big the measure of angle B, P, C is. That, I need this angle right here. So I need angle BPC. Okay, that's equal to what? Well, what's good is that we have things that we can, properties that we can use to deduce it. Okay, I don't have to get my protractor out anymore. Because it could have some measurement error, whatever, but we're going to get the exact one. Okay, and the first property we're going to use is angles on a line. Okay, notice that this line right here has the measure of angle APB and BPC in it. Okay. And remember, when we're going to use angles on a line, we're going to set them okay, equal to 180, using it as a sum. I'm not going to do 180 minus 150. Okay. I need to do 150 plus angle BPC is equal to 180 degrees. So we, we sum that together. Now the measure of angle BPC is then whatever this is minus 150 using algebra here. And 180 minus that will cancel. And 180 minus 150 is going to be 30 degrees. Okay. Now why can I do this? This is an algebra move. I don't need a reason for it. But this right here is very important to put an uh, a reason for. How can I, why can I say that the 150 degrees and angle BPC is 180 degrees. Okay, that's an al that's a geometric move that I deduce from my picture. This angle and this angle make 180. So I need to say my reason. Okay, so my reader can follow. And we said before that's angles on a line. Okay, angles on a line. Now we need to find uh, the measure of angle CPD. That's this one, CPD. Okay, we want to find that measure of this angle right here. And in order to find that one, I'm going to deduce um, the uh, uh, degrees amount by using a line here, by using my, my two properties, that are, three properties I already know, one of those. And that's the line right here. And angle BPC, which I already know was 30 degrees, plus angle CPD is going to be 180. Okay, So I'm going to go ahead and use this property again. So 30 degrees plus angle CPD is equal to 180 degrees. Okay. And why can I do that? That's a geometric move. I deduced it from my picture. So I have to put the reason. Angles on a line. Okay. And when I subtract 30 degrees from both sides, I get 150 again. 150 degrees. Cool. Now in number five, um, number six, I mean, I need to find the next part here, which is this angle DPA. Okay, DPA. Now it's the missing angle from all all of these angles around in a circle. Okay. So what I'm going to do. is I'm going to use um, just all angles at a point just for fun. So I have this one, this one, and this one, and that one. Angle DPA. Okay, I'm going to do all of them together equals 360. Okay, So it's 150 degrees plus 30 degrees plus 150 degrees plus angle DPA equals 360. Notice that I am doing a sum here. Remember, write it as a sum, not to just do 360 minus all of these together. Okay. So 150 and 150 makes 300, and, three, and 30 degrees is 330. 330 degrees plus angle DPA 
is equal to 360 degrees. Okay. Notice that I'm also using, I'm not rewriting angle APB and ABPC and CPD, okay, these ones. Once I have found their numerical measure in degrees, I can use that numerical measure in the rest of my problem. Okay. So go ahead and do that on your homeworks. And we'll do an example there. Okay, so all three of those added to 330. Okay, and I'm going to run into my line a little bit, but that's okay because I have some extra space here. I'm going to subtract 330 from both sides. Now, if you're good at algebra, you don't have to do the subtraction, and there's no reasons, so you can just go ahead and do angle DPA is equal to uh, 30 degrees. Okay, so I'm going to put 30 degrees here. All right. So, what? Um, oh yeah, this. What reason was this? You got to do the reason before you do the math. Just right when you write this equation, write the reason. Okay. Right when you write this equation, write the reason. Right when you write this equation, write the reason. Okay. This was angles at a point. Okay. Now you could have also used angles on a line. Notice that this was. 50 degrees, 150 here, and this is 30, and this is the line okay, that those two are on. Yeah, either way, you'll still get the same answer, and in the homework problems, it's okay to do either one. You'll still get the right answer. You'll still get full points. Okay, what is this property? What do we notice? Okay, what do you notice about the measures of APB and CPD and BPC and DPA? What do you notice? Well, that one is 150 degrees. This one is 150 degrees. This one is 30 degrees, and this one's 30 degrees. Okay. So what we notice here is that they're the same. If they're on opposite sides of two intersecting lines, the angle measures are the same. Okay. We've deduced that through using properties we know before, and this is a new property that we can just go ahead and use. Once I see two intersecting lines, I can automatically say that the opposite angles, angles on opposite sides, are the same. Okay. And this is um, a property called vertical angles because okay, they they're angles that share the same vertex and they can have some properties there. So this only happens with intersecting lines. So we're going to say given two intersecting lines the vertical angles between them are equal. So the use is I'm going to, there's only two angles that we can set equal to each other on these ones, either this pair or this pair, okay? So there's only going to be two, so I'm going to use A is equal to B, okay? Whatever two angles they are, you can do DPA is equal to BPC, whatever, so I use the generic letters A and B, lowercase, because that means the angles, and then the abbreviation is um, all of this here, we can show that is vertical angles, VERT, period, angle symbol with an S, and close parentheses there. Close parentheses. So vertical angles. Angles that are on opposite sides of two intersecting lines are the same measure. And we prove that using angles on a line. Angles on a line and angles at a point. All right, moving on. We have, we're going to, uh, do some more properties here. Do some more. Actually, these are definitions. Okay. In the space below, do the following. We're going to draw a, a line AB. It could be at any angle. Okay. But it does have to be A and B here. Okay. Somewhere above A and B. Draw point C. So point C right here. Using a set square and ruler, draw a perpendicular to the line AB. Okay, so our set square is something that people might not have, which is okay, so don't don't be worried about that. But you can always use a corner of a piece of paper. Okay, so here's a piece of paper. I can use a corner okay, to do this exploration. This is a set square. And so I'm going to put it up here. I need to draw a perpendicular line. Okay, 
perpendicular means that the two lines intersect at 90 degrees. So I draw a little bit there, and then I can just complete my line here by drawing a long. There's another line, and there's my box. So that meets at 90 degrees, so set squares. Okay. What is the definition of a perpendicular line? Well, it's a line that intersects another. Oops, sorry. A line that intersects another at 90 degrees. How do you write that AB, line AB, is perpendicular to CD in a short way? So this is a notation thing, so you might see this in your book. So AB, line, okay, perpendicular is the upside down T, okay, so I'll emphasize that here. And then we'll do CD, okay? So a, line AB is perpendicular to CD. Where do you see perpendicular lines in your life? Well, you see them on paper. You can even think of some of these. Uh, streets. They intersect at perpendicular lines. Uh, walls and floors and ceilings. So like walls, floors, ceilings. Okay. All of those um, are examples of perpendicular lines. Key okay, for this one is perpendicular. Next, we're going to go to draw another line AB. This is our definition of parallel. Okay, we're going to draw a parallel line here. Okay, so there's a line at some random angle. There's A, here's B. So we're doing a parallel line. Now, using our set square, and you can use a, again a corner of a piece of paper if you don't have a set square. Uh, we need to draw a point C above it somewhere, or below, but I ran out of from below, so I'm just going to do above. And it's going to be drawn parallel here. Okay. So we use our sets, so we use our set square and our ruler to do this. So I'm going to put my set square here on the line. You can put my ruler right up against it. Okay. Okay, set square is going from C down to my line, and I'm going to put my ruler down here, and I can move it up and down. Okay. And what I want to do is I want to and I keep it, it's going to be the same angle. Okay. Notice it's the same angle if I keep my ruler straight. So I'm going to move the, my set square up here to my line C. And go ahead and pull off my ruler and then draw this set square. Like that. Okay, so there's my line, C, D, okay. You can also put, uh, let's see, can you put, yeah, that's the way to do it. Put your ruler up against there, set square here, tilt it so it's, you can move it up and down. Okay, so you can even, like, extend it more if you want. What's the definition of parallel lines? Two lines that never intersect. You might have heard this one before. Okay. So if you extend them up forever and ever on both directions, they will never cross. Okay. How do you write that AB is parallel to CD in a short way? So you put AB like an 11, just two lines, and put CD there. Okay, AB is parallel to CD. Where do you see pro parallel lines in real life? Well, on notebook paper, paper edges, these are parallel. You also see them in streets. The streets run parallel to each other. You can see them on railroad tracks. etc. Okay, so that's parallel and perpendicular. Let's move on to our next sheet. 
Here we're going to do a definition of a circle. It's one of my favorite definitions in this course. Okay, in the middle of this space, draw a point P. Using your ruler, pick a relatively small distance, something like one inch or three centimeters. So we're going to go ahead and use centimeters. I'm going to use three centimeters. And, gonna, and it says to, from point P, draw five or more points around P that are three centimeters away. Okay, so there's one there. There's one here. I'm going to draw, I'm going to draw lots of them just at three centimeters here. Okay, just to kind of get you, give an idea of how this looks. Okay, putting them all three centimeters away from P. And you can kind of see something forming here, don't Okay, something interesting. Well, since it's circles, or it's forming up a circle, it looks like, huh? Okay, look at that. Okay, then I can go ahead and just kind of sketch it in drawing these curved parts around P. Okay. If I were to continue doing many, many dots, points around P, then you would have this circle shape form. Okay. So that's the key to the definition. Okay, what is the definition of a circle? Well, it is all of the points that are the same distance from P. Okay. from P, well, which is actually a center. Okay, and we're going to talk about this in, uh, in a later chapter, but when we have all of the points here, the circle is technically the outside curve, okay? The inside stuff is not part, is inside the circle, but the circle is actually this outside curve here. Okay, that's the circle itself. If you fill in the curve, then you're talking about some area, okay, and we won't get to area until chapter five. Okay. All the points that are the same distance from the center. You can also use the word equidistant, if you like. Equidistant. Okay. Where do you see circles in real life? Well, we have signs. We have farms. Do crop circles. We have stoplights. We have, and so on, yeah, etc. You can find circles everywhere. Steering wheel, wheels, that's a big one. Okay. In the space below, we want to draw several circles with our compass. Okay. Now this is tricky because compass uses a kind of a um, a form here, and it's best, to, uh, the form is tricky. It's best to grab your compass and hold it with the top point here, and you can, you put your, you have a kind of a pointy end, and then a pencil end, okay? And so I'm going to make mine smaller to draw several smaller circles. Your smaller compass and what you want to do is you want to point put your compass at an angle stab the point in the paper and you want to kind of lead with the compass top pull it around okay you guys see that okay notice that I've made a mistake here put my point back in the middle and keep going okay so leading around and I'll meet okay. so it's tricky to do that and what you can do is you can just erase any mistakes there, or you can just start over. You can draw, that's one circle there, so that's the easiest way. Some people do the paper, paper turning way, which I'm gonna do that on this one, this example. Okay, so I hold, put, stab my paper, and I hold my, um, my compass at an angle again, and I just turn my paper instead of turning my compass. Okay. Now that one might actually make more of a hole in your paper, but just kind of keep it nice and still. And you have your paper. Okay. So there's a couple ways to do compass, making a circle. 
Let's go ahead and draw us practicing those. In the space below, use your compass to draw two circles that are tangent to each other. Okay. Now, tangent is something that we won't do uh, in class, um, just kind of knowing what it is here. So I'm going to kind of draw a circle here. And tangent means that they are touching. Okay, So there's one there. And then in order to make this touch, I'm going to put my point right here and then just rest my pin in the middle and draw my circle. Tricky to get all the way around, so we'll use that there. Okay. So here's two circles that are tangent to each other. Okay, and here's my point of tangency right there. Now gold, so you can this is a kind of a fun example. Gold is buried four centimeters from point D and two centimeters from point C. Okay, so here's point D and here's point C. Use your compass to find the treasure. So this could be some sort of treasure adventure on some exoplanet that has some sort of landform that looks like this, because it doesn't look like anywhere on Earth. And it's going to be four centimeters from point D. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my compass to four centimeters. Okay, this is kind of like how they might do it in, in the movies and ships and stuff. Okay, We know it's a certain distance away, so I'm opening up to four centimeters, so I went up to five here. Let me pull back down a little bit. A little bit more. We can get this precise so we can find our treasure. Okay, there's four centimeters right there. You can see that, that's four centimeters. So it's four centimeters from point D, and so I'm going to draw every point, find every point where it is from D on my paper. And that's using the circle and the compass. Oops. Kind of missed my D here. So as you can see, it's not the easiest thing to do. Put my pin back on D, come back up here, there we go. Okay, so these are all of the things from parts from D, and it's two centimeters from C. So I'm going to close my compass a couple more centimeters, so double check my measurements here. Okay, it's at three now, going down to two centimeters from C, two centimeters. Okay, open up a little bit more. There we go, okay. So stick my pin in point C, and I can go around again. Oops, that was a slip. Okay, where could our treasure be buried? I'm going around. And, oof, tricky. Okay, stick my point almost there. There we go. So my two circles. Now, it's at the intersection of two centimeters from C and four from D. Now we have two points of intersection here. There's one right here, and there's one right here. Now the treasure is probably buried here. X marks the spot, right? But and it's, that's the point that's on land. But here, this is in the water. So with technology and scuba gear and everything, submarines, we can probably find a treasure here too. So we check both of these points, but probably most likely right here. That's a fun little exercise there. All right, we're on our last paper. And these are homework questions. Okay. This will be just like the homework. Now what we have are Figures, okay. Figures with missing angles. This angle right here is 75. This is x. This one is 30. This one's y. I have several marks here. This right here is a 90 degree mark, okay. So x and 30 are 90 degrees, okay. Okay, so you look closely at your paper, you can see that. What the homework will be about is finding missing angles, and we use the properties that we know. Okay, so what, let's go ahead and review those properties here now. Okay, our first one, property number one from this section was angles at a point. Okay, all the angles around a point add to 360. The second property we learned was angles on a line. All of the angles add to 180 if they're on a line. 
Okay, angle sum to 360 here. Angles sum, put these in the square brackets here. to 180. The third one that we remember that we um, learned about and discovered by investigation, inspection, angles um, in a right angle. Okay, the angles sum to 90 degrees. Okay, and number four was vertical angles. Okay. Angles opposite each other in between two intersecting lines are equal. So remember, you need to identify the two intersecting lines before you can use this property. Okay. All right, let's take a look at our first problem here. And the directions are important to also follow. In the following exercises, the values of x and y, find the values of x and y using a teacher solution. So what I'm going to do is that um, teacher solution is a special way to be thorough in our investigation of finding x and y. We can find it by just subtracting angles if we wanted to from 180 or whatever. But we're going to be more methodical so that we can transmit our ideas to a reader or another person in a logical way. Okay, so teacher solution is a little bit more thorough. This is a different teacher solution than what is in 2010 book. Okay? So this is the geometry teacher solution. Okay? And the teacher solution has reasons and statements, has your statements and your reasons. Okay? So let's go ahead and take a look at this first example. We need to find x and y. So in my first example I have to find x. First, let's start with x first. And when you approach these problems, you want to make a plan. Okay? Making a plan means that you pick out some properties and you put them in the logical order, deducing from one to the next. Okay. Now, x and 30, for example, as I pointed out before, are lie on a 90 degree angle because no, that's given to us from the box. Okay. So whenever you see a box on an angle, you can deduce that it's 90 degrees. So I'm going to actually add these two together, x and 30, and you get 90 degrees. Okay, this is an exploration. I'm starting my exploration, so you probably want to write all of those in the scratch work. But these are actually kind of basic examples, so we can go ahead and just write our teacher solution. Now, if I associate x and 30 together and say it's 90 because of my little box here, that is a geometric move, and I need to give them a reason for that. Okay, and it happens to be this number three. Those two angles, x and 30, are angles in a right angle. Okay. So we write our statement, we put our reason right next to it. Kind of like when we explored this vertical angle idea. Okay, now when I can I can write subtract 30 if I want, solve for x, and I can say that x is equal to 60 degrees. Or I can just say x is equal to 60 because subtracting 30 is not very complicated. What I'm doing here is I'm putting three little dots. Okay, in the tradition of Euclid and his deductive geometry, he used three little dots to show that that's what he's describing. Okay? He also used the letters QED, quad imat erat demonstratum, but we're, which is quite easily done, or therefore, we're going to just use three dots. Okay? And similar to what he did with other places. Now, what we have here is x equals 60. So we found our first objective. And so when we find our objective, we put therefore, the three dots. Now we're going to look for y. y is right here. And since x was 60, I'm going to put it in here. Write it in my figure. Notice that this is x degrees and that's x. I just, when I put letters, I don't worry about the degrees. But when I have numbers, I need to worry about the degrees. That's very important there. Otherwise, you'll get a half point off if you miss your units. Okay, so in this problem, I'm working through it. I found my 60 degrees with for x, and I need to find y. Making a plan, I have, I know that I have these four properties available to me. There's no angles at a point because it's not all the way around. I don't have any information about here. We could probably do angles at a point and deduce that that's 180, but there's an easier way. Angles on a line. 
this is a line right here. I do have 75, 60, and 30. I have all of them but y. So I don't want to, I can't, I want to do this one, but I don't want to subtract y from, from all of these numbers from y, uh, 3. I don't want to subtract all of these numbers from 180 to get to x. I want to use a sum, okay? Remember, write as a sum. Okay, so, so that came out a little bit odd, so I'm going to go ahead and say that again. I don't want to take 180 and subtract off these three numbers to get to y. I want to add all the four numbers and set it equal to 180 and then use algebra to help me. Okay, so we have uh, 75 degrees. So I'm just going to go in a row here, plus 60 degrees. And I don't have to use x anymore because I know what it is now. So I just use 60 degrees from now on, plus 30 degrees, plus y, which you don't know what it is, but we're going to set it equal to 180 degrees. That's a geometric move. I'm associating all these angles together and adding them, adding them up and putting them equal to 180. So I can't, I've deduced that from my picture, okay? And now I have to put the reason, which is angles on a line, okay? Because AB is a line. So I'm gonna add all three of those up. And then calculator. You can use your calculator if you want. And we get 165 degrees. Okay, this is an arithmetic move. I don't need a reason here. I'm going to subtract 165 from both sides. So therefore, y is going to equal, uh, calculate that to be 15 degrees. Okay. So that's what a teacher solution is. It's a nice argument, one line at a time. Okay, we do one, one, uh, arithmetic or algebra move or geometric move at a time and we set that and we find out our answer that way okay and so you can circle your answer box it or whatever okay there will be plenty of room on your on your homework papers for this kind of thing okay so there's the first one go ahead and try number two on your own pause the video and see if you can deduce what x and y are remember to make a plan first we have four properties available to us to start. And resume the video when you're done. Okay, let's go ahead and move on to our uh, solution here. You can check your work. First, I need to find x and y. So let me go for x here. x is right here. I notice that x is part of um, the angle is right here. This is x. Okay, I'm going to outline that. And the first thing that comes to my mind is that I'm looking across this and finding the 95. So I'm going to see what my vertical angle property says here with these two intersecting lines. Okay, x is going to be equal to something, 95 degrees. Okay, because there's two intersecting lines. And opposite um, angles across the intersecting lines are vertical angles. So I, I already know what x is going to be with one statement. Therefore, x is equal to 95 degrees because of vertical angles. All right, so x is fairly straightforward to find. Let's find y. Now, y is vertical to these ones right here because there's y. But I don't have this angle. I don't know what that is. Um, I do notice that y in 20 and 95 and 45 are angles on a line, so line AB. Okay, so that's a good plan. Now I can go ahead and, and execute my plan because I'm going to just set all those angles equal to 180 by adding them together. So let's say 20 degrees plus y plus 95 degrees plus 45 degrees equals 180. Geometric move, angles on a line. Okay, so that's my reason. Now I'm going to add all of the numbers together and I get y plus, in the calculator, uh, 160 degrees equals 180 degrees. That's an uh, arithmetic move, so I don't put a reason. This is an algebra move, so I don't need to put a reason either. That will cancel. y is going to equal 20 degrees. Okay. Since I found a, a degree amount for y, 
I need to put my therefores on there, okay? So when I answer my question x and y, I need to put therefore x equals, therefore y equals to show that I'm finished with my work. Okay, here's example number three. Go ahead and pause the video. Try and solve it on your own. Make a plan first, find x and y, and then press resume when you're done. Okay, moving along, there's actually a number of things, ways to solve this one. I have a x first right here, and I want to, I have a little, again, here's my angle x, right here, but I have a little box here. So x and 30 make 90 across this box. Okay, so it's a lot like what we have here, number one. So x and 30 make 90 angles in a right angle. Subtract 30 from both sides. x is going to equal 60 degrees. That's it. my answer for x, so I'm going to put therefore. Okay. I'm going to put equals 60 degrees here. Now I need to find y, and I have some angles already labeled. I don't know what this one is, and I don't know what that one is. But look at all these angles that are labeled right here. It just so happens that those angles are all on the line when you add them up. Okay, so I have 60 and 30 and 60 and y. Okay, the angle, the line that angles on a line does not have to be like horizontal. It could be at any part, any slope, okay, any inclination. So I'm going to go ahead and add them up together. So I have 60 degrees plus 30 degrees plus 60 degrees plus y is equal to 180 degrees. That's from angles on a line. Okay. When I add 60 and 60, I get 120, and 30 makes 150. Solving for y, I subtract 150 from both sides, and y is going to equal 30 degrees. Therefore, okay. so I'm going to go ahead and box my answers here. I have one up here, I have one up here, I have this one here, and this one here. So what I've done is I've solved all of the teacher solutions. Teacher solution again is a way where you make equations here, relate it with one of our properties, set it equal to whatever number there is, or equal to itself. And we have the reason, angles in a right angle, angles on a line. So they're going parentheses right after, right in the same line as, as your statements there. Then you solve it, okay? And using this one first, x, and then finding y was deductive in thinking because I needed to find out what x was first in order to get to y, okay? That's how I did it. So I used my x here, okay, here in the beginning when I found it. So go ahead and try the homework. Please let me know if you have any questions, and I hope you guys have a great day. That's our lesson.